dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you just freaked out. Get ready for defeat now. I'm gonna make you bleed out. Listen on repeat now and read out all the weak now. Get up and make a change. Don't remember yesterday. If you got something to say, speak your mind before your grave. Cause your life is yours to save. Ain't nobody gonna change. Everybody stays the same. So be different, make a name, huh? I keep on moving forward. Always getting closer. March until it's over. And just like a soldier, I keep on moving forward. Always getting closer. I march until it's over. And just like a soldier. Alright guys, so this is a short one. This is just post bag work. Uh, warming up with the double stick here in a free flow Cinewali. I just really wanted to touch base on what I'm trying to accomplish here. So normally, a lot of the times you go through warm ups is very set based. So you do 10 reps of one exercise, 10 reps of another exercise, and you kind of keep it very structured. I try to just stay within the flow and we call this kind of like the feeling of application in the double stick. And I'm thinking about situations I would be in. I'm thinking about zoning around my opponent. I'm thinking about flurrying. I'm trying to apply some fundamentals that you can see I'm going long range and low line. And I'm just trying to stay within that Sinawali. So not only am I warming up my attributes of being able to manipulate the sticks, but now I'm actually going through things like Crusada and Gunting and really trying to make my body move particular to what I would like it to be doing in actual application. And I think that's a very important thing when it comes to more flowing arts that you still allow that flow capability to be there, but you give it more of a name and face as you go along your training and not just rely on doing the generic reps. Because you could do 10 reps, but you may not necessarily learn anything from it. So yeah, that was about it. One count, let's go one, uh... One movement, so first count will be the bait, second count will be the strike. Ready? One. Fast. Two. Set. One. Two. Set. One. Two. Set. One. Two, set, one, two, set, let's go one count, everything together, you're gonna bait right into it, boom. Okay guys, sticks down, relax your hands. So the more that you feel that bait kinda um, really highlight the, uh, the engagement here, it's the same way I want you to start to tailor your Sinawali when you use that as a follow-up. Sinawali shouldn't be you putting, uh, taking your foot off the gas. It should be a continuation of you flooring it. What the heck is this? Okay, so, so as I hit into my initial sunrise strike, sorry, my lightsabers weren't working, sorry. So as I hit into my sunrise strike, I'm gonna, again, burst, take an angle, continue to capitalize on what I just created. I don't want to come here and then go stationary. It's almost like I'm back, I'm backtracking what I just did. And if we are going to do it that way, then we might as well just do it from here. All right? So take this bait, make sure it works and run with it. Okay. The last thing you, you the last thing someone wants or the last thing I would want if I was on defense is to not only fall for the first bait, but then get like blasted in my face. Because not only am I going to get hit like this, I can't see what you're doing. And I don't want to look anymore because you already hit me with that first shot. So if I go, ah, and then I feel, ah, 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 ah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back away. I'm going gonna, 
I'm going to run from you. And that's how you're going to reduce your Sinawali from 20 counts to just the six, maybe less. Because your hands can weave and they won't get in each other's way, but I still have that goal that I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to still be as efficient as I can be in single stick. When I know that this hand is going to be checking, pushing, creating the angle, whoop, whoop, and then be able to check them again. I can do the same thing in double stick, but pertaining to double stick technique or double stick the world of it, if you will. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes, yes, yes. So um, as you guys continue to train that double stick, we're going to bring our left hand dexterity up and the eventual goal, which is a very long term goal, so don't stress yourself out. But we want to bring our left hand up to where it can almost look like our right hand in single stick. And we want that to, to be everywhere in knife, in double stick, in single stick, in whatever stick, in empty hand. We want to have that ability. Okay, and it starts by looking at particular areas like double stick and just taking it for what it is and then drawing from that when we loop back to another section of uh, Filipino martial arts. Okay, but that's about it. Anybody have any questions? back at the academy it's a gloomy day today but we're here to catch up on all the the boring stuff as the academy owner i am responsible for everything outside of training as well the boring stuff you know cleaning the the facility um still working on renovations the back end stuff taxes and all that yawn filled lovely information but it is part of the job one that I happily accept. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of weird because the more that I come to the academy and the more normal it starts to feel, being here without actually having any students, it's kind of like that scene in I Am Legend when Will Smith is talking to the mannequins. I truly, truly miss in-person training. And hopefully in, in short amount of time, we'll be able to at least have outdoor classes again. But rather than pointing fingers, I know I've shared my frustration with you guys. Rather than pointing fingers as to why it's a shit show right now and comparing it to other places like Florida's having live MMA events, I'm just going to be more efficient with my time. I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to continue to do what I can with the resources in the world that, uh, that we live in. I'm going to continue to push and build the businesses. Actually, our distance learning program has been exploding, which is amazing. We have so many new students that I haven't even met in person. I've only met them through Zoom and started to teach them, but we've been able to get a little boost through that way, as well as Anastasio Kalia still continued to grow over this uh, period of time where I know a lot of you guys that are um, actual students or even just site members, somewhere where you guys are, it's most likely better where you have opportunities to train outside or maybe you're just missing the actual FMA instructor that Anastasia Klee can still fill in. So I'm super grateful for all of you guys watching the YouTube channel videos I put out as anticlimactic as it is. I'm super grateful for all of the Anastasia Klee fam all over the world. And of course, I'm super thankful for my Union Martial Arts member who have held me down for over a year in all the ups and downs. And in a time when it felt like all businesses, especially in the fitness world, were going upside down, we were able to power through, sustain, and now even in some cases grow. So it really is a testament to having good people around you. It's really a, a, a very heartwarming experience to know that my students truly are like family to me and they really hold me down and hold these walls up and even if they're training at home they're still getting in their work and they're still trying to become better versions of themselves uh with everyone else so now i was going to end the video there but i felt like i didn't give you guys enough content in which you can take home and, and take to your your gyms and your training partners and practice on your own 
So this is gonna kind of roll off of the last note that I spoke of when I was teaching my live or my live virtual class um, in the, the previous clip. Now we're gonna base this off of footwork and traditionally in Filipino martial arts, a lot of the times we have what's called triangular footwork. So you have what's called the female triangle, which is a 45 degree diagonal in a forward motion, if you will. And then in our case, we have two different kinds of what we call male triangles. So the initial one is standing at the peak of an arrow and I take my opposite foot back and I kind of zone away or I avoid at a 45 and we have it this way as well. And then we have what's called an alternate male triangle, which is starting at the base of that arrow on either side. And that's me intersecting to the peak of the arrow on either side. And most of the time, if I'm on the right side, it's gonna be my right foot. If I'm on the left side, it's gonna be my left foot that leads. But those can change depending on how you combine them. So one of the biggest uh, issues I have with teaching footwork is a lot of the times we'll come across it being taught and it has to be done the exact same way that you see it in single stick, double stick, something that's more medium and long range. So oftentimes what I see is people like, not literally, but they'll measure the angle of your step. And if it's not exactly 45, it's incorrect. If you're not moving exactly the way you would with uh, a stick, then it's no longer Kali. And my whole reasoning for Anastasio Kali and the whole approach I have in teaching martial arts in general is teaching students how to adapt into the situation. And so that means that we take this 45 template and we make it more realistic in terms of how we're gonna apply it. We are empty hand, we are probably in striking range, which means I am much closer to my opponent, especially if this is more of like a sparring uh, competitive competition. So we go into that stance. I, I'm right-handed, so I most likely fight in a conventional most of the time. And for instance, if I'm gonna do a female triangle, instead of stepping wide, all I'm gonna do is slightly widen my base and I'm gonna slip a straight punch. Now that could be a jab or cross, but that's kind of the idea here, okay? I'm still doing the female triangle, but it's much more compressed due to the application. If I go the other side, I might step and I create that slight offline and that will give me the same result. It's me avoiding the strike, efficiently putting myself in a position that now I can work from, right? Maybe not initially from this. It, I mean, I could kick from here, but if this is a boxing match, and obviously I can't. But from this weight distribution, I can use that to propel myself back into the center line with things like an alternate male triangle. If we're looking at, per se, like the male triangle, after I slip, if I wanna kind of shoulder roll and turn the angle, I can turn and I'm still creating the, the angle I need, but it may not exactly be 45, right? So I don't have to make it so dramatic. I just really have to turn to again, get myself to a position where I can accomplish my goal. So I'm gonna give you guys some sets you can practice on your own. And then I just kind of wanna break down a little bit on, on why I approach it this way, right? So we're gonna go female triangle to male triangle, kind of what we just looked at. I'm gonna to step towards the left with my left foot, give yourself a little bit of a twist, turn that shoulder over. We're going to zigzag, very compressed. And then if you have a punching bag, even better, you could measure this accordingly. But we're gonna push off that left leg into southpaw, twist our hips over, get closer in range by taking that right foot step. We throw that southpaw cross, okay? So we're gonna step, throw that cross. We do it the opposite way. Again, I'm starting a conventional, you could start otherwise. I'm gonna to slip towards the right. That's gonna put me into southpaw, but I'm gonna push off this right leg, pivot, intercept, boom, and throw the conventional cross there. Okay, if we do things like the alter, or the male triangle to the alternate, I'm gonna shoulder roll, I'm gonna turn the angle just a little bit. I'm gonna open my base, widen my hips so I can pivot and force all my power into that direction. Okay, if I do it the other way, now there's two ways you can look at this. First way is just to follow the footwork itself. Sure, you could do that. But what's going to happen is I'm gonna switch my lead into a uh, southpaw and I'm gonna counter from a southpaw. Not everyone can strike ambidextrously. 
because I have a karate base, it's very common for us to do that. So it's much more easy for me to do so. So if you feel like you need to stay in, let's say like a southpaw or rather a conventional, for example, I may not necessarily use the male triangle body movement, but I'll try to understand I'm creating the angle, trying to zone away. And then maybe I step back and I counter. There's so many different variations we can do here. Pretty much what I want to get to is when you guys learn something from Anastasio Khalid, you learn something from your gym, never just take it for face value. You have to understand how you can apply it. And once you can apply it, it'll become instinctual. So there's a difference between teaching a technique and doing a technique. Because a lot of the times you might teach it by the book, but if you are familiar with positions like you would find yourself in, in, in live sparring or live rolling, you might realize you might skip a skip or two, uh, skip a step or two, or maybe you just do it completely wrong, but you still accomplish the goal. So you gotta ask yourself what's more important: doing things step by step because someone wrote it down or someone told you to, or doing whatever it is you need to do, however you need to do to accomplish the goal. So again, the way that I teach is I give students a structure. It just so happens that. My structure is Filipino martial arts. It's the art I was raised in. But it doesn't mean I'm limited to Filipino martial arts. It doesn't mean that because I use triangular footwork and I see it in boxing that, oh, it's, it's Khalid. Like, it very well might be boxing and I'll treat it as boxing. But FMA has given me the chance to look at things that way and include and, and adapt myself by making sure that when I have a, a concern, when I put myself in a particular uh, situation, whether it's clinching, whether it's takedowns, whether it's pure striking, is that the only answer I have? Whatever is, is in your lesson plan with Anastasio Khalid, is that the only response to a cross? So one of the easiest ways to look, look at striking arts, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, other styles of karate, savat, see how they look at it and see how they counter it. And then you can kind of see which one works best for you. Or maybe the way that I like to tell my students is which way is gonna cause the most trouble for your opponent. We wanna be strong in as many areas as possible so we can exploit weaknesses in our opponents and that's how we're gonna beat them down. Because no matter how good you think you are in Filipino martial arts, someone out there is better than you, particularly in Filipino martial arts but maybe they are terrible in boxing. So I gotta make sure my empty hand can adapt to that. And that's very, very important. I think that's the true essence of being a martial artist is the ability to adapt. And that's really how Anastasio Khalid came to be as well. My template gives you that understanding. It opens up the doors. Now it's up to you once you get to a particular point to venture off into this door, to that door, take this route, take that route. So I don't expect everyone to have the same passion and, and uh, admiration that I do for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if you are my student in Anastasia Khalid. But I do expect that you can take the time to stop and assess, see the good in it, see the bad in it, and then see how that translates to you and your skill set. All right, so just a little bit of food for thought there. Um, really, really, really dig beneath the surface when you guys are training martial arts. And don't rush yourself. This is a long game, so if you can't understand it immediately, then have the patience to learn the drill the way it's supposed to be. But don't just keep doing it that way because someone told you to. It's okay to question. It's okay to venture and explore and to see what if I do this instead of that in this particular drill. And that's ultimately how you're going to craft yourself into uh, a better martial artist. So hopefully you guys were able to take some, some tips from that. Hopefully you guys were able to see some similarity between Kali and boxing or maybe in something that you already do a striking art that you train just want to say i'm super grateful and i'm not sure if this is in another clip but i'm super grateful for everyone across the board uh, for supporting this channel and for keeping me afloat and keeping me occupied during this crazy time we're going through i hope you all are doing safe check out the description box to check out all the goodies on it is having a semi-annual sale coming up shortly so definitely check them out and uh, as always, guys, if you're interested in training Kali with me on astastrokali.com, all the good stuff is down below. And that's about it. That's all I got.
Thank you.